Monday after Monday. Hello there, Links here, and we are playing Sweet Fruit Cake. Hope your hazmat suits are ready because we are dumpster diving with this game. We are dumpster diving really deep, so really it's better to have the hazmat suit on. I have one. Hope you have one as well. Let's go. The day began with an energizing wake up. Bad. I don't know when happened to me, to be honest. I even did my morning exercise for a change and ate as much of mushroom soup as my mom wanted me to. Yeah, who eats soup in the morning? My mom appreciated my gesture, leaving a giant lipstick mark on my cheek. I had to apply some effort to wipe off this colorful decoration. I packed my things and rushed out of the door. Now, when I saw students heading to their lessons, I shared their energy and happiness. I felt alive and a real part of the group. Those falling didn't last. Hi, Stefan! With a smile on my face, I greeted a tiny girl walking with the school's main bully. I admit I was so used to her calling me by a short and sweet version of my name, but I didn't expect that the simple Stefan coming from her tiny mouth would take me aback. Hi Dina, Georgie. Uh, Wait, but I thought you were in the Lonely Hearts, Hearts Club. So? But you're dating a small girl, you freaking pervert. There is nothing between us. I just agreed to protect her from bullies. But you're a bully yourself. That's in the past. Is he? I mean, maybe. But if you think about it, first... He was the one who was protecting Alice. So... In the end, I don't know if he was a bully, really. I fell numb. Georgie and Tina were holding hands. Without stopping, the bully was dragging my little sister after him passing me by ostentatiously. Somehow, Tina managed to get out his strong masculine grip. Oh! Uh, go ahead, Georgie! I'll catch up with you! Yeah! Georgie sniffed, but obeyed. So, Georgie, huh? How sweet! I chuckled nervously, then I pulled a dissatisfied face. You look surprisingly good together. Yep! He likes my company, even if he's hiding his true attitudes towards me! He pretends to be a golem made of bricks, but inside he's a sensitive child, just like you! Even if there was a child hiding inside of me, I'm sure my gastric acid had long digested his life. Oh my god. <sighs> Why can't there be a normal main character? Why can't we get just a dance main character? But no, they gave us a piece of shit of a person. By the way, on the right, nice thighs. <laughs> Besides, I'm not hiding my attitude towards you. You are dear to me, like a sister. Tina clenched her little fists and was about to beat a different elsewhere out of me, but she held back. Whatever. Well, how is he? Georgie, I mean. So jealous and funny. The girl addressed me in a whisper. But don't worry, I feel nothing towards him. It doesn't look like it. It's hard to admit, but I was really jealous of this little girl. Said the MC. Don't look so great, Stu. I'll stay with him long. We'll just walk holding hands for a couple of evenings and go to our homes. What do I care? I don't care. Do whatever you want. I can walk with him till morning. I suppressed caustic, caustic remarks that wanted to get out. My look betrayed my dissatisfaction. Tina saw it and buttered her eyelashes innocently. Stu, don't worry about it, kitty. He's full of flaws. I think we are talking about the stew again. My girl started ticking off her fingers. There's a horrid stench coming from his mouth. MC for sure. His head shines with grease. Definitely MC. 
There is dirt under his fingernails if he's just a match from a coal mine. Definitely MC. While walking with home, he'd pick fights with passerby. Okay, that's not MC, but I bet someone would kick his ass anyway. He scared all the old ladies. MC does that with his face, yeah. He just wouldn't stop. <laughs> I'm afraid you've just described an average boy, much like myself. What? The fuck are you talking about? You must be joking. He'll speak his nose in public. Ugh, disgusting. Which is disgusting. Okay, I agree with Tina on that very much. The girl laughed. Well, if he's such a Neanderthal, he's got no chance. <laughs> Still, he's sweet. <laughs> so, how long are you planning to put up with him? It seems like he won't be able to last another day. I don't know. The girl took my hand. I like it that you are so jealous. It's sweet. It's like you're the girl. <laughs> Nonsense. I'm not jealous. If I'm jealous, that's only because you asked Georgie for protection, not me. I mean... <laughs> Listen, again. If the game did not enforce that, he would wipe the floor with you. We all know that, so ugh. Ugh, I'm gonna say, you know what? Let's say nonsense. Fuck it. Whatever you say. In that case, I'm off to spend time with my real boyfriend. The girl started laughing in the wrong way. She ran towards Georgie and jumped on his back. At that moment, I felt something. It was unpleasant. I was jealous. I looked outside the window to see what's going on in the schoolyard. My classmates were already outside. The thing about Tina is she's going to end up like Kate. Except for the fact, uh, well, she ex does experiments on people, right? So you know which part she will be like. That's why I kind of don't like her as well. Anyway. Um, I look outside the window to see what's going on in the schoolyard. My classmates were already outside. A month later, Tina and her new fiancé also appeared outside. She was telling him something, gesturing wildly, and Georgie visibly kept falling for her. It was pretty amazing how quickly our bachelor succumbed to her charm. It also was pretty amazing that I didn't. Yes, you did. It was I, Lynx, who didn't. My school bell rang. I need to go to class. Oh yeah, it was supposed to be P. <sighs> Hope I'm not late. You're almost late. We need to divide into teams. There is no need to have it, right, Stu? It's a girl's match after all. How's that? Matilda stopped confirming the cigarette in front of Alex's face and stepped in front of her friend. I don't see a problem. Yeah, I don't see a problem. FYI. A... Um, Primary school, middle school. If for some reason we had P together, you know, boys and girls, I would be in teams with girls. You know? It was nice to defeat all the boys. <laughs> Not gonna lie. <laughs> because that's how it would end up. At the time, at least. In high school, I skipped quite a lot of PE, to be honest, so yeah, it didn't matter. But, yeah, primary school? Middle school? Yeah, let's go! Anyway. Sure, but it's a game for pure and uh, virgin gentlemen, am I right, Alexi? Alexi felt demoralized by his witty friend. He turned quick and just kept looking around. Ah, uh, okay, where's my team? Here with the guys, of course, the strong independent ladies will face the humans on the D battlefield today. We'll face the humanoids to be precise, but yeah, the girls will play against boys. Why this battle of sexes? We can tie with appointed captains. I'm a simple man, I started recruiting guys to join my team. She recruited the girls and here we are. What an idiot. <sighs> and the number of players in the teams is uneven. Get out of here! Go hang out with your own team! 
Who the hell do you think you are? I'm the referee here. Be careful, I'll give you a red card. Alex gestured for Matilda to go away, suddenly waiting for her to leave us alone. Matilda looked at him the way a serial killer stares at her victims, promising him a world of pain and ran back to the group of her classmates, already warmed up on the field and ready to play. Long story short, we're screwed, we don't have enough players, we're gonna have to take one of the girls and I do who? <sighs> Why don't you choose yourself? I can't, I have a reputation now for being some sort of gender terrorist. And as Matilda will get offended if I choose someone she doesn't approve of. I need to stay true to my image, but you're new here, you have no enemies. Alright, I need to think. The girls knew that one of them would have to play with the boys, and some of them were eager to do it. What are you so happy about? Oh, our future victory, Dumbass. If you're planning to win, the choice is obvious. What? What, what? Only I can help you win. They have nothing on me. You don't even have to do anything for your minority. team. So what do you say, Stu? Uh, can I see the full list of candidates, please? Alexi dismissed Kate with a wave of his hand. We'll call you back, honey. Kate started walking away with her head held high. She didn't walk back to the rest of girls fall. Probably she didn't want to admit defeat. Me, me, I want to play with you. Lisa was hoping in place. Be a corner, cool please. This is a respectable institution. No, it's not. Said Lexi, trying to seem like an important man. Lisa gave us a confused look. What the hell is this? This is some beauty pageant. Let me join your team and let's play. Why are you so eager to play with us? I lean towards Alexi. She isn't exactly friends with the rest of the girls. Oh, who knew? Why? Are you a chauvinist? What? Why? No, I'm not. Come on, guys. Alexi, Stefan, take me. Oh, boy. What a line. I can't deal with them. I've already started talking about dresses. What's next? Boys? Makeup? TV shows? My head will literally explode. Lisa turned to the girls. They were silently judging the reckless redhead. Don't let them have me. They will tear me apart. <laughs> Stu, I like her. Let's take her. Yeah, yeah, take me. Come on, take it easy. You are a girl too, after all. And you are a man. We are made for each other. Why would you say it to him? Lisa turned her head and gave us a flirty look, pretending to be all innocent. Alex, having noticed that my jaw dropped to the ground, pushed me aside. Come on, let's not succumb to their feminine words, please. We need some time to decide. Can I play with you? It depends on your skills. Can you surf? Are we playing volleyball? Are we playing volleyball? Are we? I need an answer game. Tell me if I'm playing volleyball here. Hey. I see. Well, we'll be in touch with you shortly. Alice didn't move. I can bring the ball back if it lies over the line. Well, this isn't a very useful skill. What do you say, Stu? Hard to say. I've never seen her in action. It's hard to decide. But she has potential, that's for sure. Alexi leaned close to me and started whispering. She definitely has potential. It's practically falling out of her shirt. Look, but we're playing to win, right? 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 Alice is a little shy, but she's alright. We should give her a chance. Alexi started to Alice. Wait there, we need some time to discuss it, we'll let you know. Alice started walking away without saying a word. I didn't care about winning like Alexi did, but I knew that my choice would have an impact on how all the girls viewed me. What if, what if we say like uh, none of them? <laughs> I mean, clearly this will strike good points with one of them and bad points with the others, right? And I'm not sure what to answer. Okay, I want to be on very bad terms with Kate, that's for sure. Okay. Alice Lisa. Hmm. 
You know what? I'm gonna say... Let's go Lisa. We'll see where this gets me. I hope. Mm, let's go. Whatever. I couldn't help staring at Lisa. Her beautiful green eyes made me weak. When I looked at her, I saw myself drowning her eyes and begin begging for mercy. She was smiling, seducing her innocence. Having lost all ability to think straight, I pointed at Lisa. Kate shrugged, looking visibly annoyed. She pushed Alice with her shoulder as she walked away. Alice looked disappointed. Happy! <sighs> and I regretted that choice. Why? Why did you do that? We are doing basically everything through the game, so they hate him. And this happens, like it's so ridiculous. Unexpected Lisa jumped to my arms and gave me a juicy kiss on the lips. The hot blood the red hand kept hugging me without holding back, almost causing me to lose balance. I need to hold on to something to keep my balance, so I grab onto her big butt. Luckily, I didn't tip over. Everyone was staring at us, they looked puzzled, some squealed with jealousy, and others almost fainted at the sight of us enjoying our embrace. Keep your hands off of me, you, you, you will. The red haired beauty felt my hands on her butt and squeaked. This is my fault! If I do go, we'll fall! Well, then it's fate! Let me go! Airbox? A couple of our classmates ended up squeezed under Lisa's soft buttocks. Perfect timing. Alexi was one of them. Poor guy, he but kept smiling at Lisa, pretending that she wasn't heavy at all. I mean, she definitely isn't. He just meant desperately need of the liar's ring. Well, you're part of our team now, Lisa. We take care of our teammates, you know. Ooh. Don't you think uh, camera angles in anime are really nice? <laughs> the game was bursting with energy. Lisa was playing on a great level, taking artful shots and executing powerful serve forcing our opponents to consciously roll on the field. I guess I made the right choice. The game as well as the peak glass was over, everybody could leave me quickly run to the showers. So I knew that the locker room would be unbearably crowded and stuffy, I waited until everyone was done and came in last. Sounds like MC is afraid of something. Good game, Stefan. I was so surprised that I almost jumped. A stranger appeared behind me. But he definitely knew my name. He must have heard the guys during the game. Thanks, um... Constantine. But my buddies call me Stan. By the way, uh, yeah, thank you for the basement key. I was in such a hurry that I forgot to thank you. Your help meant a lot. No worries. It wasn't anything extraordinary. I'm no wizard after all. Ironic, isn't it? It's not easy to speak to you in private. Uh, you sound as if you've been stalking me. That's the last thing I want to be doing right now. Get dressed, please. The awkwardness of the situation was palpable. I slowly got up and began to put on my pants, fighting off a strong desire to run back into the shower because I felt dirty. Stan waited for me. He bumped his head on the locker a couple of times as if that was gonna help him unsee the things that have happened here. So, did you enjoy the read? Stan continued when I finally put on my uniform. What read? Your principal's diary, of course. I felt cold shivers run down my spine. How do you know about that? Who do you think I may made sure that you found it? You? Stan nodded. Why did you plant it in... for me to find? I want to help you, weirdo. Before becoming a wizard, you should really consider all of the risks. But lucky for you, you have me. So, what? You're one of them? I glanced over at his hands. He didn't have a ring. Not yet, but I'll be. Pretty soon. I know, I know. I don't have any magical powers, unlike you. I'm waiting for my turn to get into the School of Magic. The sooner you get into the School of Magic, the sooner I will get your ring. Well, as soon as it's my turn, I mean. 
So I'm helping me to speed up the process? Sure, I help you, and you help me. Think of me as your guardian angel. Thanks a lot, but I don't need any help. He frowned. Hmm, I see. You think you can handle everything yourself. By the way, Stu, I did all you that you work for you. The least you can do is show some respect. What are you talking about, eh? Stan, is it? He sighed and ran his finger through his hair. Well, if it weren't for me, you would have been spending your days in the hospital. After Georgie had crushed your spine to a little shards, instead of leaving it up, hanging out with ladies. It's your fucking fault that we can't destroy the MC. You bastard. Well, again, we're the one whose face got punched in by Georgie. It's not at all what I recall happened, but maybe my memory is playing tricks on me. Thank you for the book and the key, but I don't think I should be grateful for anything else. Well, not to toot my own horn, but to give credit where credit is due. He took a brief look around, touched his chin and grazed at me with an evil smirk. As soon as found out that you and Georgie had a disagreement, that you planned on solving the fight, I immediately knew that it's not going to end well for you. There will be no success with the ladies if you're trapped in a sarcophagus band chap. Like a mummy that I see you. Would you agree? I would. But we have slowed the whole process down and we don't need that. So that's why I spiked George's drink with a small dose of sedatives. It was enough to knock him out completely, but enough to cause a little fatigue. And to affect his motor skills and concentration. I somehow find it hard to believe, especially keeping in mind how hard it was for me to beat him. Don't overestimate yourself. I'm telling you the truth. Joey trains every day. He's taller and stronger than you. Don't be ridiculous. He's correct about that. I stared perplexed into the dark abyss, revolting my physical abilities once again. His story sounded plausible enough for me to lose confidence in myself. Want to know something else? He was smirking like a gambler, worried that someone might call his bluff. Spit it out. I said with confidence, feeling ready to learn more from my guardian angel. You got so lucky with Tina, don't think. She fell through so quickly, and she's so smart and fun. I even felt a little jealous, but I still, still I had a little something to do with it. The mysterious invader held his head up proudly. What? Did you give birth to her or something? What could he possibly have done? My entire sister is her classmate. So as soon as I found out that Tina was looking for a boyfriend, and once I had identified the new ring owner, I pointed you out to her. It'd take long. For her to get a crash on you. Uh, 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 nice. Seriously, you put a little girl under me. Not very smart if you considering the romance with a child is a fishy business, even for a future magician. I mean, come on, sir. It sounds like you're kind of thankful. You're a piece of shit, so you know. Uh, first one, seriously, you put a little girl under me? Until today, I have not dwelled on the fact that Tina is only in love with me because of my miracles metamorphosis. Besides, I didn't want to ruin a child's life, no matter what kind of villain I'll become in the future. Or be maybe it has something to do with the fact that I see myself in Tina, naive and open minded about the object of my adoration. What are you babbling about? Like when I was desperately in love with Kate. Okay, I can. You are throwing the word love left in and right, so, you know, Serge, in your mouth it has no meaning. And completely ignore the fact that she does not care about me. But Tina, she's just a kid. Are you serious? You're planning to put that little girl under me? Ah, screw you, man. She's perfect victim for the ritual. She's naive enough to fall in love blindly, she's easy to manipulate, and she won't hesitate to let you have her. And since she's still a little girl, and you and her can be together in a way, that's a perfect excuse to blow her off at the very last moment. And that's it. You're a wizard. Congratulations! What? Okay, who would torture a young girl like that? Especially when she's in love for the first time in her life. Man, you are a scumbag, that's for sure. So are you, sir. You don't want to talk, Casanova. When was the last time you've been honest with your girlfriends, huh? Have you told about your true feelings? Or revealed your true self to any of them? Huh? Huh? MC beat his tongue and clenched the fist in anger. 
Don't look me like that, you hypocrite. You missed the point. That's still... Tina, Tina is still very young. She'll mope and sulk for a few days, but then just forget all about it, shrug it off and move on. Not to mention the fact that after this she won't take the next relationship so lightly, you're actually giving her a good life lesson. You must agree, but it doesn't sound all that bad. Stan looked very pleased with himself after he finished, wrapping this shit candy into a shiny wrapper of self-righteousness. Well, all of that sounded way too familiar. Ask more about him having don't ask. I will ask, I'm curious. Uh, how much this guy was involved. So that's everything you've helped me with? Ah, it's hard to keep track of all my numerous good deeds. Stan answered, looking visibly pleased with himself. Ah, it's easier to list things I didn't do. Really owe me big time, buddy. I'll pay you back for all your help, don't worry. I'm counting on it, especially as I sent the teacher to break up your fight with the Georgie to save your ass in case the sedative didn't work. Uh... Stan burst out laughing so hard he teared up. Oh boy, we got info about Vic. She doesn't need to be expelled. Well, who'd have thought you could actually beat him? Certain not me. Alright, I'll admit that you're quite useful to our case. I mean, game forced this result, okay? He wouldn't win that. Well, thanks a lot, you ass clown. Now Vic is going to expel because of you, and Lad, even for he's a moron, almost got turned to a me speed because he was the prime suspect I thought to myself. I decided to not say anything just yet, even though I was tempted to kick his angel's winged ass. The things he said made me scared of him a little. Assuming that what he said was true, it's hard to imagine what he was capable of. Now you understand how useful I am to you. I could use your disappearance. I really want to leave you alone, but you know, this rebel reflex. When one asks enough and the other says once again, I can't help myself. Did pro did professor well did Professor Dormer say so? Is this how you react to guys? Huh. <laughs> Const Grimas Wiley, apparently wanting to attack me. Exactly, but hurry up, Stu. If you don't use this rig soon, I will. What do you mean? Tomorrow is the last day you will spend looking like this. Did Professor Dormer say so? I said so. I mean, to be fair, if he was able to get in the house and plant the diary. Wait, if the diary was in the house, I don't even remember him anymore, but whatever. He was able to plant the diary. He will be able to get the drink as well, for sure. He winked and a uh, devilish smile appeared across his face. He st started walking slowly towards the exit. I was alone in the locker room. I've spent the rest of the day wandering around the school. I was embarrassed, sad and lost. I couldn't believe that... Most of my luck was indeed carefully created by other people and based on the lies and pain caused to all of my newfound loved ones. Could it be that without Stan I would have shown up in my new look at my school and just repeated my story of loneliness? Yes. Could it be that I wouldn't have made any friends without his help? Yes. It would have been better that way. Tina wouldn't have ended up with Georgie and Vic would have remained safe and none of the girls would have gotten hurt. I mean... Shouldn't have put the goddamn ring on, that was easy. But you're a loser and a piece of shit and uh, whatever. As I wandered through the corridors trying to get my thoughts straight, I realized that I started a series of events that will cause irreparable damage. But what am I supposed to do in a situation like this? Oh, Stu! I was just looking for you! After turning the corner, I managed to bump into Alice, almost knocking her down, failing to notice her once again. Sorry! No, no, no. I'm sorry. Although, wait a second. I don't care if sh I seem paranoid. How the hell did she appear here this quickly? It And it isn't just Alice. Everyone I have met as the new me have been following me around all the time. The nun desperate trying to meet me, rushed towards me and bumped into me. Lisa appeared seemingly out of nowhere and just in time to offer me to skip school. Matilda tried to get me involved in her work as the editor of the school newspaper even though she was getting help from Vic. 
And now Sta Stan, who, as it turns out, spends all his time stalking me. You, you always walk so quietly. Which, which is awesome. That's awesome. I still hear almost in an angry voice. It's just how I walk. And as I'm sure you remember. No, no. I know what you will say. You are not invisible. It's just that you are very stealthy, as weird as it sounds. You walk so quietly and appear so sudden that it's hard not to assume that you are sneaking up on people on purpose. I'd better get going. Leave Alice. Ignore. What? Uh, wait, by ignore do you mean what? And leave... What? what? What's the meaning of this choice? Leave Alice, okay. We go. Ignore, we go as well, right? Or are we ignoring that fact she said she wants to go and not? we are not letting her... I don't know. Let's leave, whatever. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to offend you. I took Alice's hand. Please stay. Just don't hurt me, okay? I click leave her alone, what's... I took my hand off hers. Damn, I didn't realize that I've squeezed her wrist too hard. She was almost crying when she rubbed her wrist. What the fuck is wrong with this guy? Why would you... Your skin is so delicate. Yeah, I don't have spiky armor like Kate, or a shell like Vic. Almost want to say that you don't need all of that, that I would gladly stand up for you and protect you, but think, as how I just bruised you. I'm so embarrassed. It's fine, it will heal soon. I don't get it, I said leave her alone and... Ugh. This guy is so dumb. Alice looked very sad, I mean, she has been through so much emotional pain and now I physically hurt her. Dempsey said that. And did that. Luckily for me, she wasn't sad. She was shy. Well, think us how you owe me now. Can I ask you for help? Sure, ask me anything. Yesterday, I read about the procedure that could make me feel better. I'm tricked. What is it? Well, I'm best to tell you. So how am I supposed to help you? You're right, but if I tell you, you'll probably think I'm stupid. How weird can it be? Alice shrugged and pouted her beautiful lips. Is it urine therapy? <sighs> Why are we? Why do we have play to play as such a fucking dumbass? <sighs> like I cleared her throat. Oh my god, is that it? No, come on, that's disgusting! So what is it? Come with me and you will find out! Let's go. Before I took the first step, she stopped me by saying, Close your eyes. Right now. Yes, trust me. <coughs> Ugh, sorry about that. I closed my eyes and felt her dragging me somewhere. We walked forward for a while, then we turned and there were a couple of steps, again one turn and then some more steps. Don't peek! Whatever you say, mom! I honestly kept my eyes closed. There was no need for me to peek. I knew the school all too well, so it was quite easy for me to figure out where we were going. Yeah... It probably would be easy. If you told me, again, my... To be fair, any of the schools... If that were done to me, I knew where I was in the very beginning... Yeah, it would be easy. Mm -hmm. We're almost there! I've heard the attic doors squeak. Alright, fresh breeze, street sounds. Uh, let me guess, are we in the ladies' room? I just giggle shyly. Oh my god, don't drop a white light like this! The girl shrugged and looked at me playfully. She seemed to be deliberately postponing the reveal, so then the wait would make the moment more special. Okay. I stepped aside. Behind her there was a table full of various dishes. 
The table is a big box covered with a sheet. The chairs next to it were urns turned upside down and covered with newspaper. It's pretty creative, nice. Oh my fucking god. Pigeons. Eliminate them right now. Okay, those are probably not pigeons, but... Eliminate those bastards right now. Obviously, I'm not doing that in real life, but... In games, I would not hesitate at all. I just, in general, don't like birds, okay? Uh, we sit down without saying a word and stare at each other. Not to sound rude, but this is the therapy you've been talking about. Yep. I was afraid you weren't gonna do it. It would have been a shame to let all of this great food go to waste. I mean, have you tried it yet? <laughs> <laughs> How did you get all of this food in here, by the way? I have connections. She giggled playfully. The school staff loves me. Our cleaners love to chat and I make good listener. Besides teachers like their quiet types and I don't make any noise. And if someone asks me for help, I always help them. Okay. Maybe that's why you're so invisible amongst other students. Maybe. I hope you're not offended that I distracted you from important business. Nah, what other business could be as important as romantic dinner? Ugh. Annie's blast. So what does the chef recommend? Oh my god, it's not like you have a lot to choose from. I took a quick look at the range of dishes trying to decide what was going to be the first thing I want to try. Try the Stolichne Salat. A fucking what? People often think that it's the same as Oliver, but it's different. And yes. She shrugged shyly again. I did cook it myself. In fact, I've cooked everything myself. I've eaten delicacies prepared by my peers at various fairs, but no one ever cooked anything especially for me. Nobody is surprised about that. Well, apart from my mom, of course. But if you don't like it, you can tell me. I won't be offended. <laughs> nope, not falling for that again. Only a fool would ever be speaking honestly to women. That's bullshit, by the way. Alright, let's dig in. Everyone has different taste buds, you never know. I followed her advice and started with the non-oliver salad. It was surprisingly delicious and I was thoroughly enjoying the meal and smiling with pleasure. I was smiling at the sight of me enjoying her cooking. Why aren't you eating? Even if I have nothing to lose, I will try to maintain my figure till the last day of my life. Otherwise, who knows, I might not fit into a coffin. <laughs> uh, I felt sick as soon as she mentioned death. The food I just ate started making its way back up. Really? Seriously? That got you? Wow. That's weird. Alice was looking at me and laughing. I'm kidding. I'm going to join you in a second. What a joker you are. Um, num, 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 num. She moved another salad dish towards her and started eating slowly. Uh, I'm a great chef. Quite a surprise. Is this your first time cooking? Nope. Come on. All girls know how to cook. It's a law of nature. But I realized that I look like a perfect sphere. I've given up cooking. What? Are you trying to say that you look like a blimp? Alice just dropped in shock. I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> well, it wasn't funny. I almost choked trying to make my dumb joke work. Oh my god, I wish you would actually choke, MC. I wish you would. Uh, that would be a really good ending for us. Definitely. A million years of evolution from monkey to human and yet... Nature somehow didn't realize that a man needs to be at least part chameleon to have conversation with the opposite sex. That's bullshit. You just have to freaking have brain, which you, MC, don't have. My god, Serge, you fucking piece of shit. Oh, is it? Like, noticeable? 
Say what? Sure. I like curvy ladies. I try to encourage my lovely hostess. The fatties, you mean? Well, I wouldn't put it that way, but... Sure. Well, I don't. So did you have something to grab on, right? I felt embarrassed and tried to find salvation in my bowl of salad. Alright, well, if that's the case, I'd better eat. It's so good, dang, I can't stop. Do you mind if I finish your plate? <laughs> I was so surprised by her request that I pushed my plate close to her without properly thinking about it first. Because in reality, I was very hungry and in no mood to share. I'm sorry, I always like this when I'm nervous. So you eat when you're nervous? But you are also... But, but then you are also nervous when you eat. <laughs> what? This sentence doesn't make any sense. It's a vicious cycle. <laughs> and that's a red. That's the red light right now. If you make noises like that while, while eating. What? I said that it's a vicious cycle. At least you being here eases me some of my anxiety. I can tell. No, I'm serious. I'm comfortable around you and you don't ask too many questions. You are so mysterious it's hard to get an extra word out of you. And you? It seemed that Alice bit more than she could swallow and she needed a moment to chew. Ah. Uh, just be more stern with me. I'm not used to talking to boys one on one. Alright, fine, if you say so. Let's go. Tell me more about yourself. Tell me what your interests. What do you care about besides your untimely death and changing shape? Why would you say that at all? What are dreams or plans? I want to know what kind of person you are. I don't know. I don't know anything. I never thought about it. Well, it's time to think about it now. Ah, oh, right. You know what's funny? I've been keeping a diary since I was seven. I've been writing down everything that happens to me. My thoughts, experiences, but I've never made plans for the future. That can be good, right? Yeah. Doesn't sound great. Well... Maybe even if you don't know what your goal is yet, it's been driving you all along. I mean, something's been driving you all this time. Well, I think maybe you're right. Think about it, what could that be? She dug deep, her foot fell off her spoon. She seemed lost in her own thoughts. Let me think. Hmm. Hmm. She put an empty spoon in her mouth and looked at me. Well, do you think another person can be my reason to live? I know, but I don't see why not. Oh, then everything is alright. There is a person like that. Hmm. Oh, so you'll find out who that was. No, I'm sorry, I can't tell you. Oh, come on, don't leave me hanging, the suspense is killing me. But to be completely honest, I think I know who you have in mind. Not you, you fucking loser. Alice shrugged. Is it that obvious that it's not you? It's more obvious than you think. Come on, spit it out. Don't be shy. She quickly finished her food and said... Fine, I'll tell you. Well, it so happens that my life goal is to become Vladimir Ilyich Ulyanov. I was dropped dead on the ground, dragging tablecloth and the dishes down with me. I always wanted to be like him, to fight for workers' rights, to educate the masses, to spark revolutions. To think that this quiet and harmless child dreams of a world in turmoil. I mean, to be fair, that's pretty much what your country really needs. <clears throat> I have read almost all of his articles and books, and I believe that I can now make get use of this. Mm. I, wait, did I skip text? 
No, I didn't. She saw how amazed I was, and her facial expression changed as well. You don't support that, do you? No, it just... I assumed... Uh, <laughs> well, with the rooftop dinner and the romantic atmosphere and everything, I assumed that you mean me. Hey. Of course I didn't mean you. What the fuck is wrong with you? Who would want you? Stew. I close my eyes in terror. Of course I treasure your friendship as well. I've opened my eyes. It was obvious to me that she meant much more than friendship that I didn't even feel offended. On the contrary. No, it was not obvious. Seriously. Yeah. Well, you asked me about my hopes and dreams, my future, but you... Alice was smiling. You are my present. You are here with me right now. <laughs> I know that we both winked at each other. Then there was an uncomfortable silence. What the fuck is wrong with you? Suddenly Alice stood up, walked over to me and licked my cheek. Why? What is wrong with you? Let's go before they start looking for us. But what about all this? What if someone comes in here? I have the keys to the attic. I'll lock the door. This is not the outtick, by the way, so... Alright then, let's go! Liz and I exited the school and went our separate ways. Well, being the gentleman that I am, which you aren't, I wanted to walk her home. But she refused my offer, probably because she didn't want her parents to see us together. Well, which is not surprising, who would want their daughter to see with you, I mean... <laughs> so I headed, ho I headed home alone. Ah, <sighs> feeling dizzy from my romantic encounter with Alice, I fell into my work chair and started spinning around in it until I felt lightheaded. Alice was so kind, fun and caring. Life was being really unfair to her, and me, very early, was dressed in her as a person doll. Why was that? Because you are a piece of shit, that's why. Ho 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 ho. I mean, it's an easy answer. You don't even need to think this through. <laughs> I didn't feel sorry that Alice was going to die soon, and I didn't regret the time that had been lost. I just felt the warmth of the bright light that sparked in my chest. And all of that thanks to the liar's ring. Um, no. No. And no. No, it's not because of that at all. Easily achievable with all this. Speaking of which, I won't have it forever, and judging from what Sam told me, the deadline was swiftly approaching. I either have to reveal the truth about myself and end up with nothing because each of the girls, including Alice, unlike me because of the magic artifact or perform a ritual and break someone's heart. However, first, there were some matters I need to attend to. In the evening, before going to bed, I called Vlad and tried to arrange a meeting before school. Obviously, I called him from another number that my ex buddy doesn't know about. Vlad still frightened and passed by my call, because the ring changes the wearer's voice as well as their looks, was in no hurry to agree to my plan. I convinced him that I would help him get back to school safely. He cautiously asked if I could guarantee his safety, to which I confidently said, yes. Immediately after that, eh, I called Georgie and scheduled a meeting with him as well. Same place, just a while later. As soon as I mentioned that I knew who the rat was, Georgie was eager to meet with me. Tomorrow was going to be intense. So, with that being said, let's end it. We'll see if tomorrow will be really intense or if Serge is basically saying absolute bullshit. Alright? We'll find out tomorrow. Let's do exactly that. Oh boy. I'm yawning as heck right now. Time to end it. And time to end it. Hope you guys and non guys enjoyed. I don't know, maybe. Am I acting like me less of a ass towards the MC? I still hate him, but. 
I try to not be that bad. I try, okay? I try to hold back. But uh, I still don't believe he's an MC that deserves any kind of a good ending. So we are not going to give it to him. Yes. That's how it's gonna be. Anywho. You know, enjoy the video. Consider liking as per usual. And aren't subscribed but that wants to do more of dumpster diving into sweet fruitcake. Subscribe. If... Have you ever been on a date on a rooftop? Tell me in the comments. Also there's Twitch, Twitter, Instagram in the description. If you're into this stuff, you can follow me there and that's about it. Hope you all have a wonderful day and night. And I'll see you hopefully in the next episode. Bye-bye.